This is my relation. My relation. This is not my position in time. This is not my nation. No nation. I am a citizen of the world. The world. I am a boy. You, you are a girl. girl. So what happened was, what it was, was I was at Raco. Raco Evita, which used to be Raco Valencia. Uh, and I used to be a resident DJ there. One day when I was back there, Rami is the keyboard player for the Foo Fighters and they were just inducted to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. So he was there at a yoga retreat, staying at Karin's house. And right now, Mickey's with Karin at the, the Saturday market. So we know Karin because uh, she's uh, from around here, but we didn't even know her before that. And so Rami was staying there on a yoga retreat and he was just sitting at a table there and I went down, sat down, started smoking, and we started to talk. And for some reason, we just started to hit off, had this conversation. I was from some smoke, we were smoking together, and we just started talking and talking and talking, and I just really hit it off with him. And at the end, he's like, yeah, um, I, let me get your number. And I'm like, yeah, okay, and I, I, I give him my number. And Mickey was like, who is that guy? And like, why did you give him? You never give anybody your number. I'm like, yeah, you don't know, but he was really cool. Like he was, he was, he's the type of guy I want to give my number to. At the time, Rami was waiting. He's like, yeah, I'm just here because my band is on a break right now and I'm just waiting for the call. And I'm like, what the call? Well, Dave's got to call me back because we're going to do this new album. I meet him in Ibiza at this stage. He goes back to do that album. They go to the studios and we're keeping in touch, keeping in touch. Because yeah, when I come back, the album finishes, they start to go on world tour with the album. And when they go on tour with the album, he calls me up from London and it was like, um, I think it was at Wembley or some crazy shit. And he wants to arrange because he's got some friends coming. And he's got um, Johnny Lazy Star, who he always plays in a band with when he travels around, he's not with the Foos. And Jesse Green, who is a violinist, who he also always plays with and has played with for many years and hangs out with him back in LA. Now, Jesse Green is the violinist for the band Pink. And at this time, they had been traveling around as well. And she was out of work at that time, at the same time when he was doing his thing. So come to find out, when, they leave, when he leaves us, the next year, they go on tour. The fucking Foo Fighters do the biggest tours of their life. They travel everywhere. They fucking, they're fucking Like now, they just got inducted to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Jesse Green goes on and gets the phone call from Pink to have her do this amazing tour of hers. And they go on to the beautiful, I don't even know what it is, I watched this video, amazing. She's like trapeze all the places. There you can always see Jesse in the bottom. Stadiums around the world over. Bam, 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 bam. So we called it the detox tour because these guys were so torched from tour that they wanted to be able to have a place to fucking do regular gigs. So myself, Rami, Jesse, and Johnny Lazy Star all meet up at uh, Karen's house and we start to gig together like if so he brings his little keyboard and, and then she has her violin and Johnny's got his guitar and then we like are like normal musicians when you get together for the first time we start to jam and put a band together so that we can tour Ibiza. Jesse. And then I'm like, sure, I, I think, think it's just that
Uh, are you free Saturday night? Saturday night? For play? I play.
But when the light shines, you know I call. I'm going to follow the light of the Now this is a second shot test, and this time hopefully the fucking microphone's on. But we see how that one checks out there. We have a special guest. You're doing something? I'm, I'm always doing something. I, I'm working. Yeah, but it's okay. Do you record? Um. Yeah, I'm always recording. You wanna? What do you wanna do? Nothing. I'm just double checking if you have everything all right. No, no, everything's fine. I'm just preparing. I was preparing. You wanna come in then or what? I just want my cup. Oh, really? Because now I'll have to either start over or or this is like the pattern interrupt or what? This is a pattern interrupt. Um, I'll just sit next to you and. Okay. How do you inspire people? Is there some particular way that? you're really good at to help inspire people like running into people on a regular basis we're always running into people who are a little bit down it seems like 98 percent of the people that you meet are going through the storm coming out of the storm or heading into the storm one thing to do is to help break their state you know and a lot of times when you see people really down you can just break their state by cracking a funny joke about something and then you see they laugh all of a sudden and the whole energy changes you know the whole vibration changes and then they almost forget what it was they were so miserable about before, even if it could have been something really powerful in the, in the life. The reality is in that moment, in that particular moment, their world can be okay, but it's their thoughts about the world that make it distressful, sad, depressing. So you can help snap them out of that state by maybe saying something funny, a comment to them about how beautiful they are. And they're really, really beautiful. You talking to me? <laughs> I think life is like this huge journey that like shit's gonna happen to you. Like you start at one end and you finish at the other. But as it's all happening to you, if you do not find in the middle of it, like the greatness, like what the secret is, like what the, like what the pony is. Like one of these stories is like, there's these two twin boys and there's, they're total opposites and the father is having this difficult problem with them. He's like, I need to see a psychiatrist about these two boys. They're two absolute opposites. And this, I think this might answer your question about my, my outlook on life and, and, and how we can turn things around. So the doctor says, I have the perfect thing for these two boys. And he takes one, he puts them in one room and he takes another one, he puts them in another room. And <clears throat> you just see a little slit through the doors and they're going they walk into the one room and the one boy is sitting in the middle of the room and he has not moved at all he's just sitting in the middle of the room and he's surrounded by all these amazing things he's got toys and candy and rides and sweets and they walk inside and they go son what's the matter with you and he goes nothing he goes why aren't you playing with these toys he goes because i'm afraid i might fall down why aren't you eating this candy i'm afraid i might get a stomach ache but how about that swing over there I'm afraid I'm gonna get hurt. He's like, well, okay. They shut the door on this boy. They go into the next room and it's a boy in the middle of a pile of horse shit the size of a small mountain. And he's slinging the horse shit and he's throwing it and it hits the window and he's covering it and he's up to his waist in horse shit, just throwing it everywhere. And they're walking on that little boy and he's smiling and he's the happiest ever. And they go, son, what is it that you're doing? He goes, well, I know with all this shit around here, there's got to be a pony in here somewhere. And like one is the most optimistic boy and the other is the most pessimistic. And my outlook on life is the deeper the shit, the bigger the pony. So when all this shit in your life is happening to you, dude, you have got to look for the pony. It's in there somewhere because there's no way you can have all this shit and not have a fucking pony. It's just not possible. And so if you always try to find the pony in the shit, like, okay, so your yurt gets this bug in it, and you've got to fucking totally revamp the whole situation and do a refit. Okay, but now we've got an outdoor theater. Now we've got theater in the round again. Now I've got a diversified basketball court where 
The last thing you've got to do is shoot over a big man who's a seven footer. So you got to learn the floater. It's like all these things that I've always wanted to do. It's like, where in there can you find the fucking pony? And so when all these things happen, it's like, okay, I got my back fucked up and I didn't know how to do it. Now I've got to travel to places I never would have traveled to, to go to hospitals and doctors. I don't want to do that. But wow, I got to see India in a way you'd never fucking get to see it. I got to see Africa in a way. Holy shit. I would have never gone to Africa and seen no motherfucking witch doctors or no. I would have never done that shit. But I had to do it. But in the process, I met the most amazing people, missed the most amazing food. I was there at Gory Island, the 400 years anniversary of the beginning of slavery, on the place where they said it started. Therefore, the super commemorative sort of experience. And I was there just, I just so happened to be there at the right time. So it's all these things that, like, I'm like, okay, this shit's happening to me. But in the process, I couldn't perform. So I had to figure out how to make money. So I had to figure out how to make money online because I couldn't make money performing. But in the process of figuring out how to make money online, I learned how to make money. <laughs> and then it was like, oh, shit. Fuck, dude. Now you don't have to worry about the fact that you can't go to your job or you, you, you can't go perform because you don't have to. So there's the fucking huge ass pony. My back is fucked up, but... Ooh, I'm not wandering the streets broke anymore. I'm not a starving artist anymore. It's like, and I'm still here. So I had people who were way healthier than me. Unfortunately, they didn't make it to this point and I'm still working my way through. I just have to be grateful for that. It's like, you're here for a reason. You need to be happy and great. Are you here? Be grateful. They're not done with you yet. Get it? Hey, obviously it's not done for you yet. What else did you need to do that you haven't done yet? So, you know, my documentary is coming out. The like an audio book, the new album, writing songs. It's like, yo, you need to get the crack of lacking, bro. Who knows? Tick, tick, tick. Bro, bro, bro. It ain't your time. It's time to go, go, go. So, where's the pony? Where is the fucking pony? You got a mountain full of shit. There's no pony in here, bitch. That's just impossible. Don't, don't. I'm from New York. Don't give me that bullshit. You can't, There's no way you got a room full of shit and then no one. Oh, how to get here? There's a pony here somewhere. Let's find it. What is your mission? 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 What is your mission?